Okay, so let's have a look at this example. We've got a pebble that's dropped into a lake and it creates an expanding circular ripple. Suppose that the radius of the circle is increasing at the rate of two inches per second. At what rate is its area increasing when its radius is 10 inches? So we've got this circle that's expanding in the water. And if it's expanding, it means that its radius is going to be changing. So its radius is going to be a function of time. And since the radius is changing, it means that the area is also going to be a function of time. And the question here is, if we know how fast the radius is changing, how fast the radius is changing, how big the circle is getting, can we figure out how fast the area is changing? They should be related, because the area is related to radius. So as the radius changes, can we figure out how fast the area is changing? Well, let's just let, I've written it here, but let's let r of t be the radius at time t, which is measured in seconds. Time is measured in seconds. So it's always good if you, if you haven't had in variables introduced in the question and you decide to introduce some in your solution, you should declare to the reader what your variables represent. So the area at time t is, well, that's going to be pi times the radius squared. And the radius is a function of t, so it's going to be pi times r of t all squared. Now we're interested in at what rate is its area increasing? At what rate is its area increasing? Well that's a question about a derivative. So we want to know what dA by dt is. And we'd like to know in a particular case when the radius is 10. Let's just work out what the derivative is in general and then see if we can figure out what it is when, when the radius is 10. So in general, it's going to be d by dt of the area expression. Now what's this derivative? Well, it's a constant times a composition. So we know that the constant can always come out of the derivative. Then we're left with differentiating a composition. The r function is the inside function. We don't have an expression for it, but that's all right. We know it's a function of t. It's changing with relative to t. So our inside function is the r function. Our outside function is the square. So it's going to be 2 times the inside function. That's the derivative of the outside, evaluated the inside, times the derivative of the inside function. And so this is now 2 pi r of t dr dt. Now that's the derivative in general. What we would like to know what the derivative is when r is equal to 10. When r is 10 inches, what's the derivative in general? Well, that would be 2 pi times, well, r is 10, so I can just pop 10 right in there, times dr dt when r is 10. Do we know what the rate of change in r with respect to t is when r is 10? Well, we have back in here in the question that the radius of the circle is increasing at a rate of 2 inches per second. So we know that this is equal to 2 inches per second. So this is 2 pi times 10 times another 2, so that's 40 pi. And this is a question about the area, rate of change of area, so we should include its units because units are given in the question. So this is square inches per second. And so there is our resulting rate of change in the area. As the circle's increasing, the radius is changing at 2 inches per second. At the precise instant when the radius is 10 inches, the area of the circle is changing at a rate of 40 pi square inches per second. Okay. And you notice here that from that step to that step, this is where we had to use a chain rule. And the key thing was to notice was that while well, this inside function, this inside function, r of t, we didn't have an expression for it, but that's all right. We could still apply the chain rule. Derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. And when we do the derivative of the inside function, we just have to leave it as dr dt. We don't know an expression for the radius in terms of time. That's okay. But we can just leave it in terms of its derivative. 
dr by dt and work with that throughout the rest of the question. Okay, so let's have a look at another example. Suppose that f of 0 is 0 and f prime of 0 is 1. Let's calculate the derivative of f composed of f composed of f at x at the particular place x equals 0. So what is this derivative? f composed with itself three times. Well, again, we just sort of peel back the layers one by one. The outermost function is f, and then it's got some inside function, which we can deal with later. By the chain rule, this says that, maybe I'll write here, by chain rule, so maybe I'll CR for short, it's the derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function times the derivative of the inside function. What's the inside function in this case? The inside function is f composed of f at x. We've peeled off one layer now. Now we're left with trying to stare at the derivative and figure out what the derivative of the composition of two functions is. And so that first part was f of f of or f prime of f of f of x times the derivative of the composition of f with itself. Well, that's the derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function times the derivative of the inside function. So this is a chain rule again. In this case, our inside function is the f of x function. The outside function was the other f. So here we have an f of x and an f of x again. And so this is now f prime at f of f of x times f prime at f of x times, well, the derivative of f is, can also be written as f prime. So the derivative of the composition of itself three times is the derivative of the outermost one evaluated at the innermost, uh, so the, the, the inner function, which is f composed of f. And then we deal with the derivative of the next piece which was the middle f, evaluated at what was inside of that, which is the innermost f. And then we multiply by the derivative of the innermost function. So this is really the chain rule twice by chain rule again here. Now we're interested in the case when x is 0. So when x is 0, so I pop 0 in for x everywhere at times f prime of f at 0 times f prime at 0. And now we just need to use the information that's given. f of 0 is 0 and f prime of 0 is 1. So let's have a look. Well, f of 0, that would be 0. And then f at that, that would be 0. So then I'm looking at f prime of 0 times f prime of, well again f of 0 is 0, so this would be f prime of 0, and then the last one is f prime of 0, so we get 1 times 1 times 1, because f prime of 0 is 1, so the result is 1. So there's our derivative of the composition of f itself three times if f satisfies these two properties at 0. Let's have a look at one more example. In this example we have a model for how a rumor spreads. Um, here p is a function of t, where t is the time measured since the rumor started. And p is the proportion of the population that knows about the rumor. And a and k are just some positive constants that in some sense depend on the juiciness of the rumor. So we're asked a couple of questions about p. We want to know what the limit is as t goes to infinity. Uh, essentially, this is asking, after a really long time, what proportion of the population knows about the rumor. And we want to find the rate of spread of the rumor. So let's look at the first question. What is the limit as t goes to infinity of p of t? Well, this is the limit as t goes to infinity of 1 over 1 plus a e to the negative kt. Now, as t gets really big, we have k times t. Well, k is a positive constant, so that's a key thing to notice here. So k times t would be also a big positive number. Negative k times t would be a really big negative number. e to a really big negative, well, that's getting really small, close to zero. So in the limit, 
this e to the negative kt is going to zero, multiplied by a, which is another positive constant, still going to zero. So this is going to one over one plus zero, or one. So after a really long time, what proportion of the population knows about the rumor? Well, the proportion is one. So 100% of the population knows about the rumor as t goes to infinity. So what's the rate of spread of the rumor? Well, this is t pre prime of t. It's the derivative. Rate means derivative. So we're looking at the derivative of 1 over 1 plus a e to the negative k t. Now we could use the quotient rule here. This is a quotient where the numerator is 1 and the denominator is this, this other expression. But I'm going to just observe that, well, I could also write this as a power. This is 1 plus a e to the negative k t to the negative 1. So although it's a quotient, I could also write it, well, in particular, it's a quotient that actually is a reciprocal, so I could always write it using a power. Now I can use the chain rule. Derivative of the outside function, so that's the negative 1 comes down, minus 1 from the exponent, so it's a power, so we use the power rule. Negative kt to the negative 2 times the derivative of the inside function, 1 plus a e to the negative kt. Now this inside function, it's the sum of two functions, the derivative of 1 is 0. This, the other piece, the other term, is a constant times an exponential. So I don't need to worry about the constant, that'll just get pushed outside the derivative. The exponential function is now a composition. It's an exponential composed with this linear function. So I'm going to need to use the chain rule there as well. So this becomes, well I can write this back as a fraction again, 1 plus a e to the negative kt squared. Derivative of this, it's a e to the negative kt, so that's the constant times the derivative of the outside function, evaluated at the inside function. Exponential is the outside, inside function is the linear. Derivative of the exponential is itself, so this is exponential evaluated at the inside, times the derivative of the inside function. That's negative kt. So this becomes then, the derivative of the inside function is just negative k. Negative k combines with the negative 1 to give us k a e to the negative k t all over 1 plus a e to the negative k t all squared. And there is our derivative of p. So that's it for this section on the chain rule. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.